All right, uh, let's move on and talk about gear. Gear seems to be such a huge thing to everybody, right? And I'm no different. I'm a gearhead, I admit. Um, and as I'm getting older, I am really thankful for the mirrorless to have come out. You know, I feel like I'm gonna gain maybe another eight to 10 years lugging this gear around. Um, and then we'll uh, see where it all goes after that. So let's dive right into it. I have everything I own. Uh, I am a Sony ambassador and have bought in completely on the Sony system. In fact, the uh, camera that's filming me, you wouldn't be able to see here cut it, because it is the Sony A7S camera. Um, so I'm going to start at the wide angle and go all the way through to my telephotos, my specialty lenses, and then you're going to see four cameras over here. And uh, we'll talk about it, and then I'll tell you which ones I travel with domestically and internationally. I know that's a big question to a lot of people, especially if you're not used to traveling internationally. Uh, moreover, my uh, tripods. I own about five different tripods. Majority of them um, are fairly heavy duty. The uh, one that I'm filming with now is the Really Right Stuff Travel Tripod. I own mostly all Really Right Stuff. Huge fan of their, uh, not only their tripods, but just the way they run their business and operate their business. When I have a question, I can call and I get a real person. I don't get routed around. All right, let's dive in. I'm going to start over here. I'm just going to tap the lenses. Uh, I'm a one man show here filming and what have you. This is the Sony 14 mil 1.8. It is my go to night lens and it is razor sharp corner to corner. It's got a bit of a beveled nose to it. So it's not a, a lens that you're going to fit a filter to, although um, you can buy third party uh, filter adapters for these lenses that do have the beveled noses. So 14 mil, my go-to night lens. I believe in night, I wanna fill up the sky with as much stars or the Milky Way as I can. And uh, so I, I go to the 14 mil. Now, that's not to always say, that's the only lens I use at night. This next one um, is the 12 to 24, and it's an F2.8 and I have used that for night also, but I have been using that lens a lot more these days. Uh, it's, it's a staple in my bag because when I go wide angle, I wanna do a lot of near far relationships. In other words, let's say we're doing some flowers with the uh, background of an ocean and I wanna get the nose of this lens right up as close as I can to the foreground flowers. I, I always preach fill the frame, especially with wide angle. I think uh, the, the uh, camera stores, if there's any still out there really, they, they always push this notion that a wide angle lens is to get just more in the shot. Uh, that can't be any further from the truth on the way I think of about a wide angle lens. My thought on a wide angle lens is that near far relationship and getting very close to your foreground subject. Uh, fortunately now with the Sony a7R5, I have focus bracketing built in, so I don't even have to worry about depth of field so much anymore. I'm gonna lean around my big uh, 400 here, come to my next lens, which is the 16 to 35 f2.8. Now, that's a great lens, razor sharp, G Master lens, and I have a thin Singray neutral polarizer. In fact, all my lenses, as many as I can, I outfit with Singray um, neutral pol polarizers. There's a lot of different polarizers on the market. Singrays are not cheap, but if you're gonna spend the kind of money we're spending on all this glass and the cameras, Gosh, don't, don't throw a cheap $30 filter in front of it, guys. Um, spend the money. If you don't have it, save it. Get a good, good polarizer. That's the first 
line of defense when the line when the light is coming through your lens and you pay all this money for great glass and uh, to simply throw on kind of a cheap polarizer and uh, have that as your first line of defense with this glass uh, you know I just wouldn't want to want to go there okay next lens and I use this oh gosh at least at least 50% of the time for the majority of my landscape pictures and that is the Sony 24-105 f4 now um, I know people want that to become a G master lens but I can tell you this lens is razor sharp especially if you're doing landscapes and I'm shooting in the range of no less than f8 and no more usually than f16 and I can vouch that 8 through 16 on the aperture just uh, it, it's, it's just a razor sharp lens I really don't know why I didn't get the G master designation because I believe it's that sharp um, but nonetheless it's a staple in my bag now we're going to start going up into the telephoto ranges and really uh, for those of you that are rather new to photography um, if we're talking a full frame sensor the rule of thumb is anything 50 millimeters is kind of what we would see with our um, field of vision okay including our peripheral vision that's at about a 50 millimeter lens so anything less than a 50 we're going down to wide angle anything more than a 50 we're starting to come up into telephoto okay uh, so actually that 24 105 is a is a good crossover lens 24 mil out to 105 the next lens that um, I use on a regular basis too is the Sony 100 400 that is a G master lens and it is phenomenal sharp just sharp as can be it matches up well with my teleconverters which I'm going to talk about in just a moment uh, I like shooting if I'm not shooting ultra wide I like shooting telephoto I want to crop in the camera I'm not one for kind of get it right and then we'll throw it back in Photoshop and, and uh, we'll get the crop settled on there I like having that crop done in camera and I, I'm a I'm a fidgeter I'll, I'll take a picture I'll play it back in my camera in the field and I'll do a mini image review on myself and I'll look especially let my eye drift around the perimeter of that frame and if I'm seeing distract distractions or something that doesn't belong it's not coherent with with what I want to do with that frame I come in a little tighter the old rule of thumb when in doubt get tighter <laughs> I've lived by that my whole career uh, a rather new lens out from Sony within the last couple of years I guess it's not all that new anymore is the 200 to 600 another killer piece of glass it is um, well it's put it this way it's eliminated my need to go out and get a, a 600 f4 and a couple reasons for that not that the 600 f4 is a bad lens that's a phenomenal lens but it I am not really a wildlife photographer I'm a landscape photographer and my days of shooting sports are in the past uh, uh, for those of you that don't know I started out as a sports photographer worked with uh, Sports Illustrated was 28 years co-team photographer with the NHL San Jose Sharks uh, it just did a lot I worked with um, Major League Baseball the NBA for 16 years the NFL um, FLIR card company scorecard company upper deck card company I did a ton of sports and yeah if you're gonna be into that realm of shooting sports uh, a 400 to 8 which is gonna be the next one I'm gonna talk about and uh, 600 f4 uh, they're gonna break the bank and uh, the sad thing is nowadays I don't know if there's that big of a return on your investment anymore I'm just being totally honest uh, you know um, the stock agencies came along and kind of bought up the rights to the sports world especially Getty images and uh, they just don't pay the amount of money that um, you know that if you if you went back 20 25 years ago when I was working with the magazine in New York SI and what the rates are today we're, we're actually making far less 
So it's hard to justify lenses that go up in the $15,000, $16,000 range, let alone two of them, uh, unless you're getting a return on your investment. For those of you that have a lot of money and you're into shooting sports or um, into shooting a lot of wildlife, you can't beat it. This is a 4028 lens. The Sony 4028, they're just tack sharp. And they're tack sharp wide open. They're meant to be shot at wide open. Uh, I lived and died 26 years on the sidelines shooting NFL football and college, NC2A college football with a 400 and a 600, and then usually about a 35 mil on a camera around my neck. And that was how I shot sports for years. And I could shoot them wide open. In fact, I'd tape them off the aperture and they're, they're just razor, razor sharp. Having said that, I'm gonna come back to the 200, 600, very, very sharp lens. Uh, once again, especially at the apertures I'm shooting them at, and especially this lens, I'm rarely down to f8, I'm more around f11 to f16 range. And it is uh, extremely, extremely sharp. Okay, another lens I wanna show here a little bit into the specialty lenses. This is a 100 uh, f2.8 Sony macro lens, 90 mil. Probably, well, I won't say probably, I'm gonna say definitely the sharpest lens I own of all of these next to the 400. 2.8. Um, the 400, it's every bit as sharp as the 400 2.8, but it's a 90 mil. And I love doing macro work. Um, I'm finding nowadays that I'm getting away. You, if you see my hands moving, I've, I've lived with a tremor, a little familiar tremor or essential tremor my entire life. I, it's not getting any better as I get older. So to try to handhold any of this stuff, it's getting a little harder, but I'll still crawl around in the flowers. We had a super bloom out here where I live, out on the central coast of California. Um, you probably heard about it, and it was about a 45-minute drive away from me, and I was out there a lot, just crawling around on my stomach, shooting a lot with that lens right there. A couple of other, other lenses. Uh, these are teleconverters, the Sony 2X and the Sony 1.4X. Oh gosh, as little as 10 years ago, when I uh, was still back shooting sports, uh, 2Xs, you just, they, you couldn't use them. They, they, there's just nothing that would work um, across any camera brand. I was uh, Canon back in those days, and they were just too soft. I wish I had them, because I, I shot uh, NHL hockey with a Canon 35 to 350 mil lens, which was a great lens for on the ice to shoot. Uh, then when I went up above, I shot the 400 2.8. Um, I couldn't even put a 1.4 on those lenses back in the days because they just weren't sharp enough. Nowadays, these two converters on the 200, 600, 100, 400, and the 400 2.8 just absolutely razor sharp. Um, these over here are photodiox uh, lens extenders. And what those are is there's actually no glass. Let me open up these and show you. There is, no, it's going to fight me now to open it. There we go. Okay, if I take that apart, you're going to see, hello, there's no glass in there. It's, it's simply what it's called, an extender. And I will usually put it... Well, I can actually put it on any, I won't say, yeah, on any. Actually, I'm going to say that. On any of these lenses, I could put it on there, and it's going to allow me to get in closer and focus closer. Okay, so um, I don't use them all the time, but especially when I'm shooting flowers, they do come out. And I will use it with the macro, and it just to get maybe that thin line of a petal in focus, you know, let's say like a bunch of poppies, um, and you, you just want to get the edge of one petal sharp and let everything drift off in the soft focus and amaze a color. Just fantastic. Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, the four cameras, and I actually own five. The first one is the Sony A1. That's my go-to camera when I'm doing anything involving motion, 30 frames a second. The autofocus is insanely good. Uh, the buffers just don't fill, especially if you have the, C, the CF Type A Express cards. 
Uh, you, you, you can just shoot in RAW all day long and rip off so many frames, it's insane. Bird eye tracking, um, you know, it just everything that a wildlife photographer would want. My next camera, and this is my main go-to landscape camera, is the A7R5. Produces a beautiful, beautiful file. They've improved the noise so much that the camera that's filming me is the A7S3, and that's a 12 megapixel camera, and that used to be my go-to night camera. Um, I, they've gotten it within about uh, one stop of light as far as grain goes, and with uh, the great new noise reduction software that's out on the market, I just now pack that camera and do my night work on, on the A7R5 also. And it's got the um, uh, focus bracketing built in. This was something I had asked Sony for a number of years to include. And they asked, do you want access to a JPEG or to RAW files? And I said, most definitely RAW files. <laughs> okay, this is one that's probably going to be exiting. Um, let me make sure I'm reading the right one. Yeah, this is the A7R4. That one's being sold here very shortly. I just don't need uh, three cameras that can do a lot of the same stuff. Once I got the A7R5, this was my primary landscape camera. It's a great one, but uh, I'm going to sell it and um, see what else Sony comes up with down the line and put the money towards a newer camera. Lastly, this is a Sony A7 III uh, converted to 720 nanometer infrared. And if you don't know what that is, there's different levels of the infrared spectrum that obviously our eyes can't see. This will get you that bold black and white, 820 nanometer or 850, I think they go to 830, somewhere around in there. That's, that's just getting almost pure blacks and pure whites. I can take it a uh, picture with this and I can process it out to look like what an 830 nanometer range would, would give me. Incredible camera for when the sun comes out on blank blue sky days. This is the go-to camera. This is what works best in uh, bright sunny days. So when I'm putting my color cameras away and I'm thinking I can't shoot anymore, now I can switch into uh, doing my stark black and white infrared. It turns the foliage white, you know, the sky's black, kind of gives you that Ansel Adams uh, when he used that Kodak Rattan 25 uh, red filter, number 25. It's going to give you a, kind of a similar look to that, okay? So uh, one other lens I want to mention, um, and that's the Sony 20 to 70. And that is what is on the camera filming me. I just picked up that uh, lens, excuse me, not that long ago. Great lens. Um, I was hoping it wasn't going to have a, what we call a hot spot for my infrared. Uh, but it does. Um, that's a video for, uh, you know, another time when we get into the chapter on infrared. But uh, nonetheless, it's a great lens, the uh, 20 to 70, great walking around lens um, if you just want to take a camera and a single lens. So I think that's about it. I have various bags from Think Tank. The 26L and the 36L bags, I'm not going to bring them on camera now. I travel with the 26L, and here's what I take. I told you I'd show you what I travel with. The uh, tripod that I'm using is the uh, Really Right Stuff Traveler tripod, and I've removed the center post column, and the reason I do that, two reasons. I don't like center posts because it defeats the purpose of a tripod when I raise it up, especially as I get into the longer glass. I don't want any vibration. And number two, I like flattening my tripod when I lay down and shoot flowers and any, uh, anything else that I want to get really low and get on the ground. I want that tripod to flatten out. So that's the one I use. Um, here's my lenses. I'm just about three days after filming this. I'm off to New Zealand with Barry and uh, we're going to meet Gary Hart over there for our winter New Zealand. Remember, they're on the Southern Hemisphere, so as 
We're going into our longest day of the year. This is being recorded in early June. They're going to be going into their shortest day of the year. Uh, I'm going to, here's the bag I'm going to take, the 26L. I'm going to take my 14 to 24. I am going to take my 24 to 105. I'm going to take my 100 to 400. I'm going to just take the 1X converter, and I'm actually thinking the 2X. I haven't decided yet because they're both razor sharp, and I may want to put the 2X on the 100, 400 and get an 800 millimeter look. So I'm probably at this point, I'm going to go with that. And the two cameras I'm going to take are the A1 and the A7R5. And the reason you're saying, well, you got all this other gear, um, New Zealand Air, which is the airlines we fly when we go, are very, very tight on weight restriction. And just taking that, I'm going to be over their weight restriction. So how do I handle that when I come into Auckland and then I have to transfer on uh, to Queens, Queenstown? If they check me and they say I'm overweight, I will take a couple of these lenses and a camera and I'll have a big jacket on and I'll stick them in the pockets of my cam in my jacket, excuse me. Now that's always worked in the past. Um, airlines do change their rules, but uh, on the flip side, New Zealand is a state that, or a state, excuse me, is a country that a lots and lots of photographers come to to photograph because of the beauty. But that's how I, I have to be very conscious on how much weight I'm taking. Um, I think it's something like 23 pounds when you convert it. I, I got to get online here and look it up before I take off. Uh, by the way, I have battery drives for these cameras, but I leave them home. Um, again, trying to cut weight, the number of batteries I take, you know, um, I don't take a lot because I'm going to recharge, cutting weight. The tripod will go in my suitcase, again, cutting weight. I don't want to be stopped with that bag as I'm making that flight to Queenstown and they telling me that my uh, camera bag is, is overweight. Okay, so that's it with gear. Lastly, having said that, and I don't have it out here, I shoot a lot with my cell phone. I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max. These cell phones have the cutting edge technology that I wish would get into all of these cameras. And uh, it's only getting better, better and better. They're lighter and lighter. And the new telephoto lenses could be out as early as the next iteration of the iPhone. We'll find out in September. And uh, I always have that with me. And believe it or not, I can um, res up those files. I shoot in raw mode. And if I'm just out seeing something and it's the only camera I got, I don't hesitate to shoot and to send off to my agency Getty Images. And I've made sales off of iPhone raw files. They're excellent, excellent, excellent. And again, I wish that technology would start to work its way into these cameras. Um, I'm not an engineer, so I can't really speak to that, but I know it's being discussed, um, not specifically with Sony. I can't tell you that because um, I don't know if it is, but uh, I, I think, you know, they certainly know that's where it's all going to. Uh, lastly, I do own a DJI Mavic Pro 3 drone that I love. Uh, I don't have here in the U.S. We need a Section 107 license. Um, once this video series is completed and out, this has been about, will be a good two month project for me. Then I'll start in on studying for my section 107. Okay. That's about it for gear. Um, trying to think anything else with filters. I do carry a couple of, uh, a five a stop and a 10 stop and actually a 15 stop. Uh, a neutral ND from Singray, and uh, I do love using um, neutral densities around water or moving clouds, things of that sort. And then, you know, just the standard stuff, blowers, rocket blowers, uh, cloths to wipe your lens down, those type of things that go into the bag. 
uh, with the extra batteries and extra cards and all that good stuff, okay? So this was just pretty much a hardware uh, demonstration for you. And uh, don't think you have to own all this. You guys got to remember, I've been doing this for a living, going on 46 years now. So, uh, you know, I've accumulated a lot over time. All right, we'll get on to the next video. I hope this helped you out.